Hi there, I'm Alan Udy for the Historical Aviation Film Unit and I'm here at Hood Aerodrome in Masterton, New Zealand talking to pilot Jerry Chisholm about Supermarine Australia's 90% scale Spitfire. SPT, tell me about it. What is this aircraft? This is a Supermarine Australia uh, kit plane. Uh, it started out life as an 80% scale and when they decided to put much bigger engines in it, as in this one, has a big uh, Corvette V8, uh, they stretched the fuselage a little bit and now they call it 90% scale. So uh, how many of these are in New Zealand? Is this the only one or are there more than, more than this? There are uh, three others that I know of, two, uh, two more at uh, Ivan Campbell's uh, Campbell Aero Classics factory, if you will, uh, down near Rangiora and uh, one for himself and one for a, uh, another person is uh, building that one. And they'll both have the big V8s in them also. Okay, so you've obviously flown a lot of aircraft in your career. How is this aircraft as a, as a sport aircraft? It's very sporty. It's definitely the highest performing of uh, the sport aircraft. With uh, It's uh, about the same weight as a Cessna 180 with uh, almost twice the amount of power. And so it definitely goes up at, a, at an incredible rate. This particular aircraft, you're, um, you're doing some flight testing at the moment. Just tell me a little bit about that. Yes, uh, Ivan built the uh, aircraft up to the firewall and then sent the airplane to Wanganui and had Rich Harding and his people uh, mount the engine and, and the, all the electrics. Uh, it's, uh, it needs a 45-hour test period because it's all totally unproven. And so far we have 31 hours into that test period. From the outside it looks like a 90% scale warbird. Um, what about on the inside? Is it uh, modern instruments? Well the first thing you notice uh, that people do notice that have seen this cockpit of a real Spitfire is that this cockpit is even larger and it's set up to have a person in the back seat uh, with, his, with the legs up here to rudder pedals in the back seat. Uh, so it's uh, wider and uh, with this big bubble canopy it's taller also uh, than the real Spitfire. Okay, so a, a two-seat Spitfire? Yep, that's the idea. I think, uh, I think that's a sales tool so a man can sell the project to his wife. Say, well dear, you'll be able to ride in it. Have you had the chance to talk to anybody that's flown an original Spitfire and, and compare notes as to how the, the two actually perform? Yes, I have. I talked to uh, Doug Booker and I told him this was a little bit pitch sensitive and he says the real one is exactly the same. Uh, he says uh, sometimes you have to be careful on the back side of a loop not to pull too, too hard. So is that something um, pertaining to two-seat Spitfires or is it Spitfires in general? It's Spitfires in general. Uh, we saw uh, because this was pitch sensitive uh, or you might even say pitch unstable a bit we've uh, applied a couple of tricks to make this uh, feel more stable. One of them is a downspring. We have a four pound spring back here in the, in the uh, fuselage that pulls the stick forward. Uh, and we've also changed the incidence of the horizontal stabilizer a bit uh, to, uh, to make it nose up. And then with the trim, you trim against it so that it's nose down. And with those two tricks, it, uh, it feels quite good in, in uh, loops and uh, steep turns now. And it also uh, smooths out the pitch control for landing with a much better feel. Now Jerry, you're reasonably well known around the circuit in New Zealand um, as flying a fairly spirited display in the vintage aviators D7. So, so what is it for you? You're reading D7 or Spitfire? Well, a little of both, but of course the, I'm, uh, everyone's a horsepower freak. Uh, I've asked, uh, the, uh, the D7 has the Gypsy Queen in it uh, that's not nearly as, as powerful or as uh, a good performer as the original Mercedes uh, World War I engine. Uh, if it had more power, it would be, it, it's a very nice airplane also. 